All right. Yeah, this was a um, PayPal request from Nicholas. Actually, it's one of my favorite Queen songs. Um, but this is Foo Fighters with Brian May and Roger Taylor doing We Will Rock You and Tie Your Mother Down. Tie Your Mother Down is like up there with my favorite Queen song. I love that track. But yeah, let's go. And unfortunately, I'm sick. Let's go, Roger. to say i have to say this like i say this is one of my favorite queen songs but i have to say he's doing an all right job he actually is that's um is it taylor hawkins i really only know dave Grohl, but i'm sure he's taylor hawkins in it which i didn't even know he sung so that's a surprise i thought it was dave Grohl, but he's actually not doing a bad job right yeah he's He's pretty good. He's got a good voice. But then this song is just a rocker. Anyway, like, it's just one of them tunes. But he's he's doing well.
Jesus. I think that's as good as you... I mean, granted, it was half of Queen and the backbeat of Queen with Roger Taylor. But I think that's as good as you could play that song without Freddie and John Deacon. I thought they smashed that. I even like Lemmy's version. And I know like a lot of Queen fans didn't like the Lemmy version just because of the singing, but I like it. It's, it's one of them... Queen songs that you don't have to be Freddie Mercury to sing, if you know what I mean. It's a rock song. So, like, he smashed it because he's got the rock growl, so it just works on that track nicely. But, um, yeah, that was fire. That was fire. Uh, the energy that they brought on stage. Now, I can only imagine as well that part of that energy from the Foo Fighters come from their admiration. Like, not you kind of want to... It's like when you see Stevie Ray play with, like, the old blues musicians that he kind of admires. You see Stevie Ray steps it up a little bit because he wants to impress them. He wants them to kind of go, yeah, this boy's good. Um, and I feel like Foo Fighters kind of had that. They wanted to show that, that like, that, that they can do it and yeah with Roger on the drums no but I, w I will say the one thing is when I watch these things with Brian and that doing I think this is the first one I've seen Roger outside of the tribute Freddie tribute show I haven't seen Roger play with too many other bands but I've seen a couple of Brian playing with other bands um but like when you see the response from the crowd at them coming out and, and a song like that, you just think, could you imagine if Freddie was still alive? Like, could you imagine? And I was actually thinking when Dave Grohl run along that stage all the way out, could you imagine Freddie with that thing in there? That would like be the greatest show ever if Freddie could run right out into the crowd like that. Like, yeah, that's you watch these things and you just think, oh, imagine. But also as well, I will say, now maybe because I like them more, but I think Roger and Brian outshone the Foo Fighters here. But that could just be because I like them more. But it shows you how charismatic and the great of a front man Freddie was that you kind of almost don't even pay attention to Brian May and the rest of the band when Freddie's on stage. But when he's not, they're like the main focus, like the energy they brought with what Roger bought with the it starting it. And yeah, that was fire. But I'm not knocking Foo Fighters. I think they've done a great, great, great version of that. And I thought him singing it was, I was like, like I say, I like the Lemmy version because the Lemmy version is just so gritty. But I can understand if you're used to Freddie and you go from it's like in the traveling traveling Wilburys where you go from Roy Orbison singing into Bob Dylan, and I love Bob Dylan's voice, but when you hear it side by side with Roy Or Orbison, you're like, jeez, they shouldn't have put Dylan there. They should have put Dylan before Roy Orbison, but. Yeah, um, if you're used to Freddie and you kind of go to the Lemmy version, then yeah, I can see why you might think, well, he's not singing it like Freddie. But that's why I like it. I like it that Lemmy kind of made the tune his own. Um, and like he did, he, although he was like very true to Freddie's thing, obviously he just, the voice is just different. But I thought he'd done a good, good, job i have to say i didn't kind of sit there think oh do you know what i mean he he's kind of letting the down the side down nah like i thought yeah what's it? it's taylor hawkins it is taylor hawkins isn't it i thought he'd done a good job good job 
but the energy they brought to the stage in that. Yeah, that was great. That was a great request. Yeah, fire. Fire. And like I say, it would just be great to see Freddy with a stage like that, where he can run out to the crowd. You just have to imagine what Freddy would do with a stage like that. It's like, you see what he does without that. But with that, where he's able to run, yeah, I think he would probably get mobbed, no. But, um, yeah, like I say, when I watch these things, I just think, imagine if Freddie was still alive. And he come, I mean, the response that Brian May and Roger Taylor got was was amazing. And the and response to their song was amazing, but could you imagine if Freddie was still here? And Freddie came out, and they done even if they'd done a duet together, it, that would have been fire, and the response from the crowd would have been, yeah, legendary. Although that was pretty legendary, I have to say, Nala, careful. There's drinks on there. Don't you give me them eyes? But yeah, fire, fire. But yeah, that's the reaction. Sweet. <laughs> 